Plastic contamination is growing at the level that is causing irreversible damages to our planet. And instead of getting lower with this problem, it is raising every day. So that was one of the most important reasons we choose to develop our pet crusher. Okay, so how crushing machines help to reduce large plastic crushing parts without having manual help. The industrialization of this process helps it to make it more quicker and have it more quality. How a crushing machine works, it works really simple. It's just a motor who actionates some blades and the blades start shredding the plastic. Here we can see some of some examples of shredding machines. Here we can see one shredder box that it is really expensive. We see another crushing machine that is also expensive. Here we can see one, one of the most important examples of plastic contamination. Here we can see a lot of bottles, a lot of plastic, a lot of plates, a lot of all kind of plastic materials that they are occupying an area which could be occupied by trees, by animals. So this is our opportunity to make a machine to help to reduce this waste into this. Okay, so in order to make a, a good work and a good integrative project, the work was divided first in understanding the function, the motor, actuator, the blades, then a sketch design, then we have the electrical power design, electronic power design, and at the end we have the following presentation. Greetings everyone. I'm going to be talking about the materials used for the project as well as the design and calculus for the blades. In the granulation of industrial and household plastic, a good quality sharp edge is required for efficient production. This is only achieved by choosing steel with high content of small carbons. Tool steel refers to a variety of carbon steel and alloy steel that are particularly well suited to be made into tools. Their suitability comes from their distinctive hardness, resistance to abrasion and deformation, and their ability to hold a cutting edge at elevating temperatures, which is what we're looking for in the blades. As a result, it has a carbon content between 0.5% and 1.5%. Having good toughness and ductility for the blades is also important so that they do not crack or ship. For this reason, stainless steel will be an excellent option as it combines good hardness with a good toughness. Also, it provides a protection to some liquids that the plastic bottles may contain when crushing them. There are plenty of advantages that stainless steel has when compared to the standard plain carbon model steel, which is commonly used and here are some of them. Higher corrosion resistance, higher cryogenic toughness, higher work hardening rate, higher hot strain, higher ductility, higher strength and hardness, a more attractive appearance, and a lower maintenance, which is really important. Now we head on to the design and calculus for the blades. This was one of the major things that we had to be focused on since they are the ones that carry out the real task when crushing the pet. Let's start with the design of our blade. The design of the blades is highly dependent on the application they are used to be for. Heavy duty shredding, such as large and big pieces of metal, require the blades to be a lot thicker and smaller, coupled with a slower speed in order to increase torque. The number of teeth is also an important thing to take into account. More teeth mean faster cutting, but it also increases the risk of the object to be crushed to skip on the top of the blade when spinning, as well as the risk of the machine to be forced in to go into a reverse spin direction. Also, 
If the blade has too many teeth, the machine may not be able to shred tougher objects. So for these reasons, we based on the common shape of the hook. A hook has a straight cutting edge and a straight or rounding back. So instead of using that edge, we use a curved cutting edge as shown in the screen. And instead of using a double shaft shredder, we thought it might be better to use fixed blades as shown on screen in order to avoid the axis get stuck at any point due to an accident as the main purpose is not only to reduce pet to smaller pieces but also to destroy it as much as possible for the calculus we're calculating the force and the load that just one blade gives in order to know the load of the whole mechanism and with this information select a proper motor. As seen earlier in the video, we know that shredding machines are developed mainly in the material they want to crush. In our case, it's PET. For these reasons, we had a look up for the dual stress of the PET, which according to a recent study of the Scientific World Journal, the most accurate value of this is 61.67. We will also need to use the equation of the short stress as seen below. We now solve for the force and we have that our dual stress times the area of the blade edge. This area is the extrusion of our blade which is 5 mm square and we obtain 30.38 newtons. With this we can use the equation of torque which is force times distance our distance is the radial um, is the radial value of our blade which is 30.83 times 60 millimeters and we have a torque of 18.5 which is the load of just one blade now we can solve for our total load of the mechanism and for our mechanism we are using 14 blades so we do the operation and we have a total of 259 newton meters and that's the total load of our mechanism with this information we can now select uh, our proper motor and we can use it with the following equation which is the power needed is equals to the torque of the mechanism times the minimum revolution possible to to take into consideration times the mechanical constant. This mechanical constant is the relationship between the watts and the HP. We solve this equation with the load previously calculated, the minimum revolutions per minute, which is 50, and the constant, and we obtain. 1.81 HP and it's important to take into consideration that an electric motor has efficiency about of the 80% so for these reasons we use something called the safety factor which is basically the native power multiplied by the safety factor and for an allowance for unaccounted variables or harder materials that are trying to be crushed so for this reason this has to be multiplied at least by 2 so we do it and we have a motor of 3.62 HP and we picked out a motor of 3 HP well I'm gonna talk about the different mechanical elements of our interior project well first we have uh, the spinning blades these blades uh, are gonna be crushing the pet bottles are gonna be spinning around this axis and they're, they're gonna be relying on these uh, on these also plates that are going to be fixed in the shredder box wall so that the bottle can um, be crushed uh, by these plates exerting its pressure uh, against these all other plates that are going to be fixed we also have uh, our transmission uh, we decided to go for a gear transmission because for, uh, well, for different reasons uh, first of all uh, it's not a long distance it's a very short distance and also because we wanted to uh, give our motor, our, the access of our motor, more security 
So in case of any mechanical uh, mistake happening in the shredder box, uh, it's more likely for one of these gears to break before uh, damaging the motor axis. Well, so for the motor, um, we selected our motor and basing us uh, in the yield stress of a common PET bottle. Uh, also having to refer into consideration the maximum torque of our motor. We made some analysis to some of the pieces uh, of our project. For example, the fixed wall blade. We perform a pressure limit uh, study. Uh, we, as you can see, we put uh, some pressure in the edge of the blade. And that is gonna be the part that it's gonna be holding the bottle and it's going to be helping the other the spinning blades to crush the bottom, the pet bottom. We also made a stress analysis, of course, of the spinning blade, exerting pr some pressure uh, pressure in its edges. And at least we also made an axis static study for the axis. Um, this is going to be because the axis is going to be holding all the spinning blades and it's, uh, the axis is going to be also having rotationary uh, movement and we did all of these studies to ensure that our entire project will work uh, correctly. We're going to be using the Arduino Uno controller. Why are we going to be using this? Well, first for the price, the accessibility and the previous knowledge of programmation and the easy adaptation of sensors. And of course, it needs less current and less space. With uh, what kind of sensors and activities we're going to use? First, we have some buttons. We have the emerging stop, the on and off. Then we have an infrared sensor. Here you can see the model. The magnetic sensor, the LEDs, and an electric lock, which is going to lock the top. Then the security elements. First, we have the, the top, the main door. Here we have a condition that if the main door is not closed, it will be not be able to actionate the shredder. Here we can see the lock, how is it integrated to the hopper. Here we can see the hopper. The next one is the motor guide, which has an amylo coating of 30 amperes and the service factor of 1.4. This gives us an extra amperage if we have an overcharge of an insignificant external factor or due to the service timing. Then, the protection of the control circuit, the differential key, give us a nominal current of 15 amperes and a voltage since 2 to 250 volts. Finally, the direct protection of the motor, the overdrive relay, which has a current range of 30 and 40 amperes, it detects the temperature and amperage fluctuations respectively. For the electrical system, we have the electrical diagrams. In the first diagram, we can see that it starts from the plug of the electrical connection with the motor guard, then the contactor, and finally the overdrive relay, which are controlling and protecting the motor. Then the control circuit, which has a protection of the differential key. Then, the control coil of the contactor, the control of the relays, the feedback, and finally, the switch of emergency. For the force diagram, for the electric knob, it starts with a fuse, then with a control coil of the electric knob, and finally, with the control relay connected by the microcontroller. In each part of the project, we need an exit gauge to transmit the exit apparatus to each device of the project. In the electronic diagram, we can see how it are connected each device and sensor of the project. For example, we have the on of relays, the on button and the info LEDs, the knob relay, and also the magnetic and infrared sensor. 
The project has a consumption of 3.74 kilowatts per hour, that equals among 15 kilowatts in a day and 450 kilowatts by month, with a month cost of 1,046 pesos by month. In the automatic process, we can see in this flowchart that if we have in on the start button, the hopper sensor, the lock sensor, and we have disactivated the emergency button, the brake is going to turn on. In our situation, this is going to get and totally off for the security of the user. So now I'm going to explain how we're going to manufacture some of the pieces of our interior project. First of all, the blades, uh, we're, going to, we're planning on manufacturing the blades on a CNC metal machine. We're also going to lathe machine uh, our axis in order to acquire that circular shape that is going to be connected with the transmission. Uh, we also manufacture the shutter boxes wall also on a CNC metal machine. And we're planning on relying on a plasma cutter for some specific parts of, or of some specific pieces that require a little bit more exactitude. Well, we're generating some codes. Uh, we're using the G20 code. Uh, this is really useful. Uh, it can help us to state the coordinates or like the path that the CNC mill machine is going to be following. It also makes some uh, automatic processes like changing the tool or uh, controlling the velocity. Mm, well, as I said before, we're gonna uh, manufacture some of the pieces in the CNC uh, milling machine, like the blade that is gonna be fixed on the shredder box, also the spinning blades, and at least the the walls of the shredding box. But for the welding process, we're planning on using a thick welding because it's less corrosible. Also because of the material that we're working with, uh, which is stainless steel. We're, for the electrode, we're using a, a WL20 electrode because it's suitable also for the stainless steel. And we're going to set our machine with an amperage of 95 amperes. This is not strong enough to like make holes on the material, but it's definitely strong enough to um, keep our pieces together. We're going to be 3D printed uh, our control box in ABS plastic and we're going to assemble the box with screws of M8. And for the assemble of our shutter box, as you can see it's really simple. We have the center which is the axis. In the axis the, we're going to put the spinning blades, then the blades are going to be fixed on the wall. And then uh, and the, the shutter box uh, walls are going to surround all the elements. For the structural member welding, TIG welding equipment and TIG welding techniques will be used because of its strength and less corrosion. This is a homogeneous welding. The electrode to be used is a WL20 and the amperage that we will be working with will be 95 amperes. For the control box, this one will be printed in ABS plastic as it is resistant and easy to print and it will be screwed with M8 screws. Here are some ABS properties that we found out. It has a high strain, a medium flexibility and a high durability. Some parts of it can be processed with acetone for a smooth and shiny finish and the major property that we found out and we care most about is that ABS has a strong electrical insulation properties and this is really important since it, this is the place where all of the cables and all the electronic components will be placed. For the assembly and adjustment we have the control box and the hooper is screwed down. The hooper will be screwed down with 3 quarters inch. The shredder box will have MA screws and the axis M12. Down here, you have the chart for the screws. And this is an exploded view of the assembly of the shredder box. This is a view of the assembly 
of the control box to the structural member. And this is another view. For the detailing and painting, we will be using BHT paint, which is a painting with high temperature and resistance for automotive and aerospace grade. And in order to make things easier, we will be using base for painting. For the cut parts, the hooper will be cut as shown on screen, as well as the 45 and 90 degrees profiles of the structural member. All of them will be cut by using a stainless steel cutting disc with a diameter of 1.6 millimeters. This is a full view of how the project looks like. Okay, so the crusher as a complete enterprise. Here we have first we have the cost, then inversion and recuperations. The total cost of uh, our machine is 9,783 pesos. We want to have an 87% of margin. And the price for the public is going to be of 28,000 pesos. And the total margin is our arming 18,200 pesos. We need to have a start of inversion that is a machinery. Here you can see the chart, the yellow chart that are at around 100,000 pesos. Two months of services that you can see two in the, in the blue chart and the price of three machines. We will have a recuperation of 10 machines in a year and the the full gain of of the machines taking out the services the inversion the machinery is of 7600 pesos how does the machine work for the consumer or for the user you introduce the pet you close the door then hit the stand button and at the end you collect the pet thanks to two sensors which are the infrared that are in the in the box they, it will not operate if the door is enclosed, so it is pretty secure for everyone to operate. Here we have four pet four pet crushers. Here you can see the prices that they are much more expensive than ours. Here in the chart we can see the machine one, machine two, machine three, and ours, and of course sale personals. Our clear attention will comes about the full installation of the machine by one of our uh, of our workers, two years of warranty against factory errors, and of course the personal attention. The scalability of this product. First, we can have more crush capacity with the same principles, more materials able to crush, and in this picture you show a plastic extruder so we can create strings of plastic. Here we can see some possible clients. These are Acopy centers that are in Mexico, here you can see uh, around 20 of them. They are possible clients because they crush pet. First, we have the circuit damages. How we uh, we want to reduce that risk? Well, by an integrated circuit that could be waterproof, the blades without edges, and a special material that could sharp the edges. And the motor connector broken. Well, you just need to change the engine, which is there.